So today via social media, Chris Eubank Jr. has confirmed that he has activated the rematch clause to fight Liam Smith. Now I said in several videos that I think this is probably the best option for Chris Eubank Jr. at this stage, given his age, given the fact that he hasn't won a world title yet, given the fact that I don't think he needs to correct a whole heap of technical issues in order to not get caught in the same fashion that he did in the first fight. This is not a guy who is stiff, upright, very underdeveloped in several areas of his game. No, Eubank Jr. is a pretty well-rounded fighter. His biggest weakness is boxing at long range in the middle of the ring. But I think that aspect of his game has improved somewhat under Roy Jones Jr. And that's not the aspect of his game, by the way, that led to his defeat against Liam Smith. Ironically, the aspect of his game that led to that defeat is an aspect that's actually been quite strong for him over the years. And that is when Eubank Jr. is on his back foot, up against the ropes, in the corner, he's slipping and sliding, and then coming back with counters. If you go back and watch his fights with people like Nick Blackwell, Spike O'Sullivan, Avni Yildirim, you'll find him in the exact same position that he was in against Liam Smith. As I say, back to the ropes in the corner, and he was able to slip and slide and come back with counters effectively against those fighters and win those fights. But Smith, obviously being more skilled and more accurate than any of those guys, was able to catch Eubank Jr. in the middle of his roles. He was able to time him much better than those other fighters. He was able to read his defensive moves much better. Where Eubank Jr. had success against Liam Smith, particularly in the third round, was keeping the fight in the middle of the ring and keeping it long. Liam Smith seemed to struggle to get his shots off when Eubank Jr. was keeping it long in the middle of the ring. So it isn't really much of a tactical adjustment for Eubank Jr. to just keep it there rather than voluntarily going back to the ropes and in the corners. And if he does find himself on the ropes or in the corners, do what he did often in the early going against people like Nick Blackwell and just tie Liam Smith up and push him back to the middle of the ring. In fact, he did it on several occasions in that first Liam Smith fight, but it would seem as though he misread the situation and thought that he could start slipping and countering on the inside against Liam Smith rather than continuing to tie him up. And that's what led to his downfall. With all that being said, just because Eubank Jr. had success at long range in the middle of the ring against Liam Smith in that third round, it doesn't necessarily mean that Liam Smith wouldn't have found a way to combat what Eubank Jr. was doing, wouldn't have found a way to land shots without having Eubank Jr. pinned against the ropes. And obviously going into the rematch, you're going to have a more confident Liam Smith. He was already confident first time around, but he's going to be super confident second time around because now he knows. Previously, he might have thought and believed, but now he knows that he's got the power to knock Eubank Jr. out. And of course, Eubank Jr. also knows this, so perhaps he'll be more cautious, less confident in the ring. The mental aspect here is going to be really crucial, particularly for Eubank Jr., because if he hasn't recovered mentally by the time the Liam Smith rematch comes about, it's going to be very difficult for him to carry out the game plan as effectively as necessary. This isn't Anthony Joshua versus Andy Ruiz 2, where AJ had huge physical advantages over Andy Ruiz. Eubank doesn't have advantages over Liam Smith to that extent in terms of height, reach, and mobility. So it's crucial that Eubank Jr. gets the tactics right, and he's going to need to be in the right headspace to do so. The most shocking thing about the first fight was Eubank Jr.'s punch resistance, or lack thereof. Eubank Jr. had previously been known for having a really solid chin. He'd never taken account in his professional career to date, but he was wiped out by Liam Smith. There's a lot of speculation about why his punch resistance has seemingly deteriorated to this extent. Some say it was the weight cut that he adhered to for the Conor Ben fight, which of course didn't happen, because of course a weight cut like that is a process which actually takes several weeks, sometimes several months. 
So you're having to reduce your calorie intake, train differently over a prolonged period. And the end result is, in many cases, a weaker fighter. Now, of course, for Liam Smith, he didn't have to do that kind of weight cut. But again, people are speculating that this was the residual effect of the weight cut he did for Conor Ben in the form of lack of strength and energy and diminished punch resistance. If this can't be remedied for the rematch, if this diminished punch resistance is permanent, then I have to imagine at some stage, Liam Smith, regardless of the tactics Eubank Jr. uses, is going to hurt Eubank Jr. at some stage. And that may lead to him winning the fight again, perhaps by stoppage again. Eubank Jr. is going to have to box a virtually perfect fight to avoid getting hit with any clean shots at all. And personally, I'd find that highly unlikely. I think he's going to get hit at some stage and he's going to have to take the shots better than he did first time around if he's going to win. The only scenario where that may not be necessary is if he stops Liam Smith, is if he gets to Smith, hurts him, drops him, stops him before Smith lands his own big shots. And one thing I forgot to mention is certain issues in Eubank Jr.'s personal life and the idea that that may have affected his performance against Liam Smith. And what I'm alluding to here is the passing of his brother, Sebastian, and the mental health of his dad, Chris Sr. Some people believe that this may have impacted on his performance. I don't know whether that's the case, but I just want to put that out there because it is something that gets mentioned. In any event, I'm quite looking forward to this rematch. I think it's intriguing. If Eubank Jr. does lose again, particularly if it's decisive again, it's probably the end for him. And that adds more intrigue for me because sometimes when a fighter is up against it, when their back's against the wall, they can produce their very best form. It remains to be seen whether that will be the case with Eubank or whether it will be repeat rather than revenge with Liam Smith having his hand raised once again. Smith really just has to do more of the same. He could perhaps be a bit more aggressive in the second fight, given the fact that Eubank Jr. seems very vulnerable to his power. He could perhaps be more active in the middle of the ring, take a few more chances. He doesn't have to necessarily, but he may feel confident enough to do so. He may not want to give any rounds away to Eubank Jr. the way he did that third round in the first fight. So, yep, I'm looking forward to it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. Are you sick and tired of the mainstream mindset? Does the dogmatic conformity and pathological ignorance have you tearing your hair out in frustration? Then don't be alone. Come and join our brotherhood on Patreon. We stand as a beacon of reason against an army of insanity. You'll gain access to my weekly topical podcast where we take more deep dives than Jacques Cousteau on an endless variety of subjects. There's also videos, interviews, live Q&As, as well as a vast back catalog of previous episodes, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen via the Patreon app or download in high quality MP3. Connect with myself and hundreds of other members in our Element chat group. There's no contract, no commitment. You can cancel at any time and it's cheaper than a Mickey D's McMuffin. Just head to my Patreon page via the link below this video and select the tier called the Brotherhood of Reason. I'll see you over there.